They're my brothers and sisters in Christ. May the peace of Jehovah through Jesus Christ, through his Holy Spirit, be with us all. And may we may we heed and subject ourselves to a new covenant which is able to save us, being conscious of our wrongs before God. May we ask through repentance, through subjecting ourselves, that the Lord through his holy covenant, that his laws be written in our mind and dwell in our hearts, that we may serve the Lord according to his will and his righteousness, his mercy and his grace. <clears throat> in this video, I wanted to go over um, the suffering of the saints as well as um, the um, location and to clarify things of where what is written in the book of Revelation where it is said in chapter 11 where the witnesses will die and their bodies will lie. I mean, in the beginning of my walk, I didn't have understanding and I was left with that lack of understanding. So I really didn't speak upon it. But I just remember, and I thank God for that, and the Lord tests our patience, and he helps us with patience through such. For it is written in scriptures that um, the Lord teaches them that are weaned from the breast. Okay, and once we are weaned from the breast or weaned from milk, he teaches us slowly and with patience. So if we are unwilling to be taught slowly and with patience, and with patience, the words won't be revealed. It can't be revealed. Okay? For to know the mysteries of God requires patience, and that is the subject ourselves. Under God. And whenever he's ready to <clears throat> reveal his truths, okay, as it is written in scriptures, precept by precept, that's how he, that's how he teaches us, precept by precept, line by line, here a little, there a little, okay, here a little, there a little. So you can read scriptures until you're blue in the face. You won't understand. God has to intervene to give you that understanding. But the thing is, there's a many, uh, I will say, men and women of the faith that would jump the gun. They can read something and they perceive with their own mind without God even revealing. And they said, oh, this means that, this means that. But that was not a revelation that was given to you. Okay, but that's how the Lord teaches his saints. <clears throat> he said, first, you have to be uh, weaned from the breast. And this weaned from the breast is the basics. You have to overcome the basics. And the basics is what the Lord says. As Apostle Paul said unto the churches, Apostle Paul said, man, I wish I could feed y'all with meat. But I still have to feed y'all with milk. And even with the milk, and this is just me summarizing, even with the milk, you're choking up on it. And Apostle Paul says, those that are feeding on the milk, which is of the church, he said, you're choking up on the milk. He said, you're carnal. For them to have division, are you not carnal? You're covetous. You're just like the world. You're carnal. Okay? So it's like, it's, it's, it's like with the Lord... It is not until you graduate from the carnality. I don't even know if that's a word. It just came on my mind. Okay, but I'm going to let it flow. If you have not graduated from the carnality, the Lord, you can't be taught. 
the true depth. But as Jesus Christ, Christ himself wanted to teach his disciples more. But he said, you can't handle it. Okay? Because you're still being uh, uh, fed with milk. And then we add formula. And then we graduate to the smaller things until you become older. And that just shows the skills of someone's uh, ability to subject themselves unto the Lord and um, willing to abstain from a lot of things in which God has called us to abstain from. For example, I'll tell you point blank, period. As far as unskilled believers, we're still gossiping. That's one thing that the Lord says that we haven't graduated from. Sowing discord, one thing. Holding grudges, covetedness, fornication, and you're not married. Fighting, um, suing um, other believers or people of the world. Deception, lies, uh, uh, gambling. I mean, I could continue. We can go back to the old law. Because the old law itself basically um, made us aware of things that God says, that's wrong. You shouldn't even be doing that. But the thing is, the, the church who professes to be the church has not even graduated from these things. That's why God can, God's not going to teach you. That's milk. That's unskilled. But then you got believers that have graduated from these things. Believers that no longer gossip. Believers that no longer, if they're not married, fornicating. They have kept themselves pure. Okay? Believers that have that are content with their income, content with their wages. They're not looking to the world and saying, oh, I wish I had this and I wish I had that. Oh, I'm going to try my hardest to get this. Oh, I hate this person because they have that. Believers that are no longer sowing discord towards somebody coming up to you and saying, oh, you know, so-and-so did this and -and so-and-so did that. They're, They're not being fed into that. Believers that are patient, Okay, believers that long suffer, believers that are kind, okay, believers that are not easily aroused by uh, um, anger, okay, we begin to practice the little things. And when we, and when the Lord sees that we're wanting to practice the little things and we've overcome the little things, that's milk. We've overcome milk. So when we overcome milk, then God adds formula. Okay. Formula. Then we're, then we're um, practicing not only drinking milk, but we're adding formula to it. Preaching the gospel. As we're preaching the gospel, the people who we're preaching the gospel to, they're seeing our own lives. They don't see that we're liars and thieves and adulterers and uh, of the world. But they're seeing that we're truly living the life that Christ had called us to live. Okay? So with the milk, okay, we graduated from. I don't need milk no more. I don't want more milk. Okay? Then the God adds the formula. Okay, I graduated from the formula. And the Lord sees it. The Lord says, okay, now here's time for you to move on. Now we're going to try some uh, basic baby foods. Okay, well, I ate the basic baby foods. Lord, can I have some the adult foods, please? Which is this the which is this meat in which Apostle Paul said that he wanted to teach the church. Okay, and he said, I want to teach you that, but I can't. Okay, so when we graduated from that, now Apostle Paul can teach us because we already graduated from. It's the same thing with Jesus Christ. So now we as believers living in the last last days, we shouldn't even be drinking on milk. We shouldn't even be on formula. But we should be over here eating steaks and lobsters and mashed potatoes, corn, coleslaw, all of that. Sandwiches, apples and oranges. Okay, because the thing is, this is with this meat, that's maturity. Basically saying, I already graduated from all of that. Tell me some real stuff. Okay, when we read in the New Testament, Pastor Paul Revelation given unto Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul getting, God revealed unto Apostle Paul lobsters and steaks. To 
to where I'm reading it. I said, man, this is crazy. This is wonderful. God is revealing this unto him for us. And with that, God teaches us patience, long-suffering, kindness, rejoicing in truth, not seeking our own will, but God's will, being humble before him, not easily aroused in anger to where someone can easily provoke us, but we are like Jesus Christ. Imagine Jesus Christ when he stood before the Gentiles and they mocked him. He said nothing. They pulled his beard. He said nothing. They spat in his face. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you know yourself and I know me. They spat in his face and he did nothing. That's a graduating from milk, a uh, uh, formula, soft foods. Maybe we own spiritual food to nothing in this world, no matter how it tests us, that we will be moved. Patience. They flogged him. They kicked at him. They spat on him. They hung him on the cross. But what did he say? Forgive them. That's what we need to get on. Jesus on the cross, having been nailed to the cross, scoffed and mocked at his own people, from his own people. He said out of his heart, he didn't curse them or anything. He said, Lord, Father, forgive them. That's power. That's meat. Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. They do not realize it. Forgive, forgive. After all of that, Jesus says humbly, love, patience, long-suffering in his heart, forgive. This is on, and this is a conviction to myself. If Jesus is able to go through all of that, Marsha, who are you? What are you doing? You say you are a follower of Christ, and Christ went through that, and He still said, "Forgive," showing love and mercy, kindness, patience, and long suffering. Forgive. As the body. We really need to examine ourselves because many of us were not. And this is the truth. We would already try to hurt somebody for what they've done to us. I don't know. I didn't expect for this to go that long, but whatever the Holy Spirit is leading to, I let him lead. Let's go into... um, what is written in the book of Revelations, which I've heard a lot of spoke, a lot of people spoke of, but I wasn't really given the um, understanding of. I didn't know, so I didn't put it out. Okay, as as is written in scriptures, um, study to show yourself approved. Okay, study to show yourself approved. We ought to study the Bible, not to read. You get some people that put it, put you on a plane, or read the book of uh, Genesis to Revelations in or one year. We give you a plan. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read and 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 I'm going to study and study and study as if I'm going to school. Okay? As it's written in scripture, study and show your, show thyself approved that you may not be ashamed. Okay? So basically study when the Lord reveals it to you. You speak it so nobody can come up to you to say, oh, what you said was wrong. No. No, you can't say it's wrong because it re- because God, the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. God gave me understanding to preach unto the people. To what men and women, when they receive the understanding, they may say, yes, you did speak it from the truth, the truth, from the truth. Okay, so we um go into the book of Revelation. It speaks about the two witnesses in chapter 11. Uh, Revelation chapter 10, verse 4, when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that are sent it out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them and their bodies okay this is what i want you to hold on to 
and understand. For many have said this will be in a literal land of Israel. Not so. It says, when the witnesses in the book of Revelation, when they are killed by the beast that rises about the sea because of their testimony, it says their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And this great city is known as spiritual Sodom in Egypt. And it also gives us a clarification. It says, okay, where also our Lord was crucified. When it says also our Lord was crucified, Many would completely say, or out of nowhere say, I got it. It's Jerusalem, the literal land of Jerusalem. I thought that too, but I didn't say anything. I was like, man, I don't know. Because I mean, a lot of things what the Lord says is written in parables. And in the prophet, I mean, even the Pharisees and Sadducees said in the time, does not the Lord speak in Psalms? That's true. The Lord speaks in riddles. To where either someone would be deceived because they take the riddles literal. And there's others with which the Lord would bless with grace and he would reveal, and he would reveal those literals, those uh, riddles. Same as time when Christ came and the disciples asked Jesus Christ, why do you speak in parables? Jesus Christ revealed unto them, for the mystery of the kingdom of heaven was given unto you and, not, and held back from other people. Okay, that's the reason the Lord does these things. So anybody can pick up a Bible and read it. But as far as the uh, revelation and the mysteries that is given, it's up to God to reveal that in their mind. Okay, heed that and understand that. Dwell on that and you will know the truth. Okay, so we hear about, um, it speaks about a great city where the, where the which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt. Where our Lord was crucified. Many say it's physical uh, Jerusalem. Now, if you continue to study scriptures, we hear um, where Apostle Paul spoke of. And it was very slight that he spoke about that. But it caught my attention. In scriptures it's spoken of, uh, it says, where how they practice in the Old Testament. It says, for the beast of those beasts, I'm sorry, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burnt without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the camp. Okay, so basically in the Old Testament, we know that it gives us a figurative uh, breakdown of what the true manifestation of what God seeks to do in our lives, sought to do in our lives, desires for the for humanity, I would say. Okay, so what we see in the Old Testament is only figurative language. It wasn't meant to take literal. Okay, so when we uh, look at the Old Testament, Jesus comes and also Apostle Paul, and they basically reveal the things of the Old Testament. So Apostle Paul said with the um, sacrifices of the animals, we look, at, we look at Christ and what he done, and we would get the true revelation. And we would look at what, the, what had happened in the Old Testament with the um, animals, we look at what Christ has done, and we look at our life uh, following as far as in the book of Revelation. So we're going to go over it again, and I'm going to break it down for you all. <clears throat> it says, for the bodies... Okay, I want you to hold on to that for the bodies, the beasts, the animals, the lamb, the bulls, the bullocks, all of them, the bodies. Okay, so when you look at the bodies of the beast, we look at the body of Christ, literal. Okay, the body of Christ, literal, in which he gave his body. Okay, and we look at our body, in which we'll be given over, which we have been given over, which the saints of God have been given over. Okay, look at Abel. Abel gave his life over unwillingly his brother killed him he didn't know his brother was going to kill him kill him okay but his body okay it says uh for the bodies of these beasts whose blood okay so we look at the blood and the blood was to um show its sign of sanctification and of uh forgiveness but we look at the blood of Jesus Christ which truly forgave Okay, so it's uh, for the bodies of the beast whose blood 
is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin. Okay, so in the Old Testament, the high priest was a, which was appointed annually to bring a beast, <clears throat> or I would say to um, to sacrifice a beast. And he uses blood to sprinkle it upon the altar, sprinkle it upon the people, so that his sins and the people's sins may be forgiven. Um, but with this, the actual revelation and truth is Jesus Christ himself gave his body, okay? Gave his body as being a beast. And his blood, which was sanctified and pure and holy, which was sprinkled upon the altar. And it says this beast was given by a high priest, but Jesus Christ was a high priest. Jesus Christ was and he is a high priest, which he, instead of giving a beast, he gave himself. Okay? He gave himself and with his blood, sp <clears throat> and with his blood sprinkled upon the altar, <clears throat> he made a way for all in which God has chosen. Okay, so we also hear, and this is what has caught me. <clears throat> this is the importance of the whole video. It says, let me read it again. For the bodies of these beasts, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned outside of the camp, outside of the gate. I want you to hear that. I want you to hold on to that. For the bodies... We hear Christ's body of these beasts whose blood, we hear the, the blood of Christ, is brought into the sanctuary. We know the sanctuary, which is in the kingdom of heaven, which Christ had to, had to uh, present himself, being high priest, mediator of the holy covenant uh, for our sakes. By the high priest, he is the high priest. So instead of sacrificing a beast here on earth, according to the law, he sacrificed something that is greater, which was himself for sin. He doesn't have to do it annually, but it is something that is forever after the order of Melchizedek, which is the king of peace, the king of righteousness. Okay. And it says the bodies are burned without the camp. Meaning the bodies are burnt outside of the gate. Okay. For them that don't understand. When God had revealed unto Moses. How he wanted to establish. Or how he wanted to build things. As far as the temple. The altar. And the tabernacle. And the outward gate. I mean, you can read all of this in the New Test, in the Old Testament. It's very long, but it's something for us to. We can read it. The measurements, okay. When God told, when He was to uh, build these things, the Lord says, "I want you to build these things according to the heavenly things." Okay, the heavenly things are which what is what were, is what counted. Okay, so we look at um, the temple, which was in the Old Testament, which was here on this earth. But the temple, heavenly, is not only we, it's not only us, which are living stones, but it also is in heaven. The temple of God is in heaven, in which he is. The altar of God is not only in our hearts, but it's also in heaven. Okay, when Jesus came... And he died on the cross and he went to present himself unto God. He went to heaven to prevent, present himself unto God. He didn't go into a physical uh, 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 um, uh, temple as the Jews did in the times of the Old Testament as far as when they built their temple and their altar and the outer gate, inner gate, the courts of the Gentile or whatnot. For how they built that was actually supposed to be a spiritual building, but I don't think they got it. Okay, you know what I mean? So, um, As it was in the Old Testament to sacrifice the animal before the blood was given to sprinkle upon the altar and upon the in, uh, inhabitants, 
the body of that animal had to be burnt. Okay, I want you to hear this. The body of the animal had to be burnt outside of the gate, outside of um, the sanctuary, outside of it, nowhere in it. When you brought it in, it's basically you bring in something that is sanctified. But you, it's like this outward uh, burning of this body. Was like is like unto us tribulation, okay. And when I say tribulation, I'm going to continue, and you will understand this. All right. So it says, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sins are burned outside of the camp. Wherefore Jesus also. That he might be so that he might sanctify the people with his blood, with his own blood. He also suffered outside of the gate. Okay? He also suffered outside of the gate. So imagine uh, the temple here on earth that the uh, that, 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 that they build in the old testament. Just physical. This is what the Jews in these times in, the, in Israel are seeking to build. They're seeking to build a physical temple, a physical altar. They're seeking to do all the things that uh, that was done in the Old Testament by the Israelites, but Jesus Christ canceled out. Okay, there's an outer court in which they speak about, which they call the court of the Gentiles. It's away from the sanctuary. It's away from the altar. It's away from the holies of holies. But we look at this in a spiritual sense. Okay, for the temple of God is not only us, but the temple of God is in the kingdom of heaven. The temple, the uh, altar of God is not only in our hearts, but it's also in the uh, uh, um, in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so when it speaks about the outer court. The outer gate, this outer court, this outer gate is not the physical Israel. It's not the physical Jerusalem to what we will see on a map. The revelation that was given unto me is that the outer gate in which Christ had suffered, same as in which the in the old law where the um, high priest for sins would burn the body of the beast that was being sacrificed they were burning outside of the camp jesus christ too suffered outside of the gate or outside of the camp this outside of the gate this outside of the camp in revelation is speaking about the earth i want you to get that i want you to hold on to that the outer gate the outer camp is speaking about the earth the earth it's not in the literal land of Israel. It's not in the literal land of Jerusalem. For the men and women are saying, oh, the witnesses will die and their bodies will lie in the spiritual Sodom and Egypt where also the Lord was crucified. The Lord was crucified on earth, period. That's what that is. Great city, spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. That's what it is. The outer gate. The courts of the Gentiles. For as it is said in the scriptures that the um, that the city will be tread, treading upon. The holy city will be treading upon. Okay? And they'll be given over to the Gentiles. So basically it's saying to us, the world. Okay? The world itself will be given over to the Gentiles. To tread. To do whatever they want. Only for a certain time. I want you to heed that. I want you to understand that. So when it speaks about these witnesses, which is not literal, if you can't hold on to that, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing I can tell you. I'm not here to convince you, but it's the God. It is Jehovah. It is Je it is God. It's Jehovah through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, that gives people the understanding. This is why many believers at the second coming of Christ, they're caught unawares. Because the scriptures is written in parables and it's Jehovah that reveals this is what this is. This is what it is. I need you to get it. Understand it. As it is written in the book of Revelation 10, 4, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against the saints. I'm sorry, shall make war against them. 
and shall overcome them. See, see, as it, as it speaks about Revelation, I'm sorry, let me correct myself, Revelation 11. As it says that it makes war against the um, witnesses. We have to understand, too, that they make war against the saints of God. And they kill us for the testimony that we hold in, in the covenant and also the um, commandment, which is attached to the covenant. It says they shall kill them and their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Well, now with this understanding, we see that our Lord was crucified outside of the gate. We see that our Lord's body was burned, or I would say crucified, outside of the camp, without the camp, which is the earth itself, not a physical, particular, uh, geographical location, but it's throughout the whole world. For if you see the saints of God have been mortared from the beginning to the end, starting with Abel, and as Jesus Christ has said when he um, spoke uh to the Pharisees and Sadducees, he says a prophet would not be killed outside of Jerusalem. And when he spoke about Jerusalem, he's speaking about pre he's speaking about pre present day Jerusalem, in which this word is given over to present day Jerusalem. Not only is this word given over to present day Jerusalem, but this word is given over to the Gentiles, and present day Jerusalem is part of that Gentiles. Okay, we're going to go further down the scriptures and you will understand where I'm coming from. In the in, in scriptures further along in the book of Revelations, it is said, Blessed are they that do his commandments, and that's the Lord's commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates. Okay. I want you to hold on to that. It says, enter through the gates. And it continues and says, for outside of the gates are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, adulterers, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. You see how all these things are coming together? This is why it's important to study scriptures and to leave yourself vulnerable. If you don't understand something, don't make it in your mind and say, I'm going to push to understand it. Be dumb and say, God, I don't understand it. And I'll wait for you to make me understand it. Somebody come up to me and say something, say something. I'm like, well, I never understood that. I'm like, why do you don't understand that? God never revealed it to me. I'll tell you straight up, point blank, period. I want you to heed that. Okay, so when it comes to the sanctuary, we hear in scripture where it says Christ did not enter into the holy places made with men's hands. And this holy place is made with men's hands is actually the temple in which men have built here on this earth. Okay, this is a temple in which the Jewish nation is seeking to build. It says Christ did not enter into that. Christ did not enter into the holy places made with men, made with hands as far as being a high priest. Okay, because we know he is the high priest. He was supposed to enter into the into the, enter into the holies of holies, sacrifices, sacrificing beasts unto God. He never did that while he was on earth. Okay, so that lets us know and understand. For it continues and says, okay, let me start over again. Christ did not enter into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. But he entered into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Okay, so this holiest of holies in which the Jews built the temple was, was only figurative. So this holiest of holies in which Jesus Christ had entered when he had resurrected is the kingdom of heaven. He presented himself before the Father, shed his blood. His blood was accepted. He was burnt. He, uh, It says burnt without the camp, but this is what they do to the bodies of the beasts. But he was killed on earth. Okay, I want you to hold on to that. He was killed on earth, suffered outside of the gate. For outside of the gate is the earth, period. 
But is the earth period that's able to be given over to the Gentiles? For the heavens, the heavens can't be given over to the Gentiles. Okay? We've seen a scenario in which the uh, uh, dragon and his army sought to enter the, well, they actually entered the kingdom of heaven and they fought against Michael and his angels. But did they prevail? No. Okay? So they was thrown down here on this earth. This earth was given over or is given over to the dragon and his army. Okay. The principalities, the powers in high places, the darkness of this world, this world belongs to them. Okay. So the hour of the Gentiles, the time of the Gentiles to where they're able to tread upon this earth. Get my drift. Do you understand that? Outside of the gate, this is the gate, okay? The world, given over to the devil, given over to darkness. This is the gate in which Christ had suffered. So when it comes to the book of Revelation, when the witnesses, it says, where also our Lord was crucified, God was crucified upon earth. Abel was crucified crucified upon the earth. Uh, uh, all the prophets and saints and uh, children of God, uh, great and small, rich and poor, they all suffered where? They all suffered outside of the gate. They all suffered in this world. This is something that I, this is something that was a revelation that was given to me. For as it is said to Moses when he was building the tabernacle, it said, Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. And God said, see that you make all things, which is this tabernacle, according to the pattern shown to you on the mount. So what Moses had made was only a pattern of heavenly things. So outside of the gate, some would say outside of the camp, is the earth. And I'm going to read this one thing to you, and I'm going to let you go. And I already read it again, but just so that you may understand. It says, blessed are they that do his commandment, and they, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates. Okay? You enter through the gates. And when you enter through the gates, Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. To enter through the gates is the time of rest, the Sabbath. But, and then it says, for outside of the gate, that's where we perished. That's where Jesus Christ had suffered and was killed. That's where it's said in the Old Testament where the bodies of the beasts were burnt. But their blood was taken in unto the altar. Well, you see in these last time, in these last days and also in the times before where our brothers and sisters in Christ have been killed on earth, which is outside of the gate, outside of the camp. But their souls are underneath the altar, which is in the kingdom of heaven. For we read that also in the fifth seal. And I want you to read that yourself. For in the fifth seal it is said, the souls cry. These souls that cry are souls that were killed upon the earth, which is outside of the gate, which is outside of the camp. Where the Lord says there's dogs and there's sorcerers and there's whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, which is defined as the world, which is also defined as Sodom, which is also defined as, defined as Egypt which is described as where our Lord was crucified, great city. The souls that were killed for, test for the testimony of Jesus Christ and the, command and the commandments of God, they cry out, Lord, sovereign and true, how long? How long will you allow the people on earth to do what they're doing to us? Okay, so the people, the souls that, that are underneath the altar that's crying out to the Lord, their bodies were burnt. Their bodies, their bodies suffered on earth because the earth was given over to the devil, his fallen angels, principalities and powers in high places, the Gentiles, the uh, uh, Jerusalem from above, Babylon, 
whatever you want to call it, all the wickedness. But it said in scriptures, it, uh, Apostle Paul said, let us go forth, therefore, unto him. When he speaks about him, he speaks about Jesus Christ. When we have known that he suffered outside of the gate, which is upon the earth. Let us go forth, therefore, unto Jesus Christ outside of the gate. Bearing his curse. For here. For here we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. So Apostle Paul says in the scriptures. For us to join Christ in his suffering. And that is on earth. That is outside of the gate. That is outside of the camp. That is this is that is this is where our Lord was crucified, and that is on earth, which is the spiritual Sodom and the spiritual Egypt. This is the great city. Think about that. Hold on to that. I'll take care.